everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, don't be fooled by the short sleeves. It's cold in here. We forgot to turn the heater on, and it was warmer this morning when we got up, but it's gotten chillier as we've gone, as the day has gone by. I did bring Mr. Brown outside. I had to think, who did I bring outside? <laughs> yeah, I brought Mr. Brown outside. Um, and I put, it was sprinkling a little bit. It was kind of misty rain. So I put a, a plastic tablecloth. Table I had to think, <laughs> what is it? It's one of those tablecloths that has the felt on the one side and plastic on the other. I put one of those over top of part of his enclosure that I have outside so that he could be outside and still not get wet even though it was it was a real light mist and the other hens were outside and so I figured if they're outside he he'll want to be outside so I put him outside for a while then when I brought him in his feet were really dirty really dirty because it, the dirt is damp still from all the rain that we got in the night and so I stuck his feet into the hair sink and I tried washing them off but you know they don't like the water even though there was somebody that posted, I don't know if it was my daughter or someone else posted a chicken in a pool <laughs> I saw, which was pretty nifty if they do that. I don't know if it was a YouTuber or I don't remember where I saw it, but I did see it. And my my rooster doesn't really like his feet washed, but I did wash them and then but they didn't get all the way clean, so when he got out, he got his towel dirty because, you know, now you've got muddy feet for sure. And then he got the washer a little dirty, and I had to wash that off. But we're going to go to my thankfulness to thing today, and it has to do with Mr. Brown and Mr. Jim. <laughs> Yesterday I was wondering, how in the world am I going to let him dust bathe in the winter? When I was thinking about it, I thought, gee was my other roosters that I had in the rooster house never dust bathed. But, Jim said, we could put something in the, in the rooster house, like... I had, um, I think it was Deb's way, suggested a uh, swimming pool, a, a kiddie, kiddie pool, pool, one of the kiddie pools. First she said a kitty litter, but kitty litters are too small. He's too big. So then she said a kiddie pool, and I think somebody else may have suggested that too. I can't remember. And then, um, and then uh, Robert from, oh, what's Robert's channel? It's, um... Um, 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 Aquarius something uh, or something. I don't know. I'll put it in there. <laughs> it's Robert. He suggested a tent of some sort, which, tenting it of some sort. And I thought, well, now that's a good idea. Then Jim said, we could probably put some, a swimming pool into the rooster house and it's, and let him do his dusting. And this way the swimming pool would have the dirt in it and then the the rooster house could have all the dust in the mess that goes with it and there wouldn't it all. It, yeah then there wouldn't be any in the house and he could do his little dusting if he wishes to do some dusting okay and uh, today i'm going to tag doing the redneck thing with tony and leanne i guess we're going to do sort of the redneck <laughs> thing with putting a rooster in a rooster house but i'm tagging i'm um, doing the redneck thing and it's with Tony and Leanne. So you're tagged to do your thankfulness. This is the thankful challenge that I'm doing. So every day you're, you're supposed to mention uh, something that you're thankful for. And then you're supposed to mention the people that started the tag. And this tag was started by Kimber Keto Life and Simple Life Reclaimed. And I was tagged by Mark the Arkansas woodcutter. So I just put everybody in. I don't know if you're supposed to put all of that in, but I know you're supposed to put the people that tagged you. So I just figure I'm covering all of the bases. And I wanted to show you what I was doing today. So we'll go to the little, well, no, we'll go to that next. <laughs> I was going to go to the video. I do have a little video for you. And um, I think it's just of crocheting and and um, it's got, it shows the, the pillowcases that have the crochet on it, and it also has the um, tablecloth with the cross stitch. But I want to show you what I've been doing. 
I told you yesterday that I had um, done a washcloth and it came out wrong. Well, this you can't tell which one is wrong because these are the washcloths and they're in the, the little basket, the last one that I made. But this is the one that this is the one that's we we can call it a, a boy washcloth, <laughs> or because what I did is I see right here I I forgot to. I forgot to go behind the posts, and so I've got two rows there that are behind the post, not that are not behind the post, and so this one's going to be for the boys. <laughs> and let's see, I'll use the same color, and this one would be for the girls because this one's done right. <laughs> we get to have the one that's correct. So that's that's what it was. And now I'm working on another one on the browns. I just I just love this this post thing. I just love it. I think it's so much fun to do. And it's it's kind of um you have to pay attention a little bit because as you can see I made a mistake. But it's it's still mindless kind of crocheting and you just you just are I'm enjoying while I listen to a video and I can I can crochet while I listen or I've been working on rosettes. I don't know if you've ever seen these before. They're like little, and this is a big one that I made a long time ago. I made this one just to show that you can go bigger. And this one I just put a piece of paper on the back. This one has um, cardstock from food packaging. And um, I was making, I, was, I made a whole bunch of them. They're all different colors. I've got, and this is only a fraction of it, just a fraction. And um, these are every quarter inch you make like a little thing. And then I and thought, crease. but a crease, yes. And before I started, I was trying to figure it out. And so this one I made, this one is different. This one's every half inch. And I thought, oh, well, that's kind of nice, but it's not what I was doing before. I'd given all of these to Emily when Emily was working for the college daycare. They had to bring in something to do that what it was is they were supposed to bring in craft items and then they were supposed to make new craft things with the craft items they brought in so I gave her all of my my little rosettes and I gave her all of my beads that I rolled on paper like those beads that you saw I did a picture with if you you probably saw it maybe and if you didn't you'd have to check in my videos because I'd have to put and things, and I'm not going to do that because I don't. I know how now because Boon showed me how, but I don't feel like doing it because then I have to look for it. I you can look for it. I put I do put things in the description. I think pretty much so I'm trying to do that so that I can find things easier because the picture doesn't always show what's in the video. And the title doesn't always reflect. No, the that. title doesn't always reflect. The title a lot of times will reflect something that I said in the video so my titles are all true to something that I said well let's go to that little video of the stuff I want to show you I went upstairs to get the pillowcases that are crocheted and I ran across these two these are some doilies that my mother made out of um, very fine thin, thin crochet thread and a very fine hook and I thought you would enjoy seeing these. A lot of people years ago used to make a lot of these, but they don't seem to do this anymore. Now you can buy them at the store for almost nothing. And this is the sides that are crocheted. As you can see, it's like the blanket that um, Pamela on the Pamela's Adoring Crochet showed. She showed that there was little holes in it, and what you do is you you put a border on it with your crochet thread and um, a very tiny needle. So this is something that she's going to do for her baby's blanket, doing some kind of crochet. I don't know whether she'll use thread or she'll use yarn or what she will use, but this is one of those that is a keepsake so if you have older grandchildren or children that you would like to give them something you can always do a pillowcase and they will love it every night 
These are pot holders that haven't been embroidered yet. But if you have children that would like to learn to embroider, this is something that you can do. You draw a picture on it, and then they can embroider it. This was done with um, pen to make it darker so that they can follow it easier. But it did have just the blue just the blue lines and it was it was um enhanced so that they can see the lines and when they go to embroider they'll be able to do it i don't know if you can see the lines that were there before you can sort of see it over here where when i was tracing i didn't trace very good here are more pillowcases these are just plain there's nothing on these these are brand new i've never even used them but They've got, they used a little bit thicker thread to, to embroider the, the edges. And then, of course, there's more of this one. This one needs to be done. This one hasn't been done yet. And here is a different, and this is another plain pillow with the embroider on the, and these did not have the holes. So these we had to make, um, make the hole. No, this was stitched on. This, you can hand stitch it. You don't even have to put the holes in. This was like whip stitched on. There's like a blind stitch there. So you don't even, almost don't even see it. This is a tablecloth that I've been using. And notice the how beautiful the embroidery is. This is something that my mother-in-law did. And I want to show you the back. Because the back is very impressive. This is the front that you're looking at. But when you look at the back, look at this. Who would know that was even the back? You have to really look at her work to make sure that you've got the front or the back of the product of the project. I'll show you another one. This is another tablecloth that she had done. But this one has napkins that with it. And I can show you the back of the napkin. See, notice the, how pretty the front is, how nice and neat. And then this is the back. The backs are really, there's not a lot of running, um, there's no tails. These are all stitches that she has there. They're not um, like you see sometimes on the backs of, of embroidery, you'll see a lot of lines of things that somebody has done. But these are, the, what you see in the back is actually the stem of the leaf that is on there. This is a leaf and that is a leaf and this is the stitch that goes with it. Notice how little and dainty. She was a very good person, good at embroidery. And they're all like that. They're all beautifully done. Her work was impeccable. It's amazing what they can do. I start my kids out with a with um a, either a pot holder or a washcloth or dishcloth. You take the dishcloth and you draw a picture on it, and they they love to embroider on that. Or a tea towel. When I was growing up, I used a tea towel, and my mother drew a duck on it, and I embroidered the duck. You start with the running stitch kind of embroidery, and these are all cross stitch, which. If you can do the cross stitch embroider, you're really good at it. The I think the running stitch is a, a lot easier. I think something like this is a lot easier. This is an item that was done at a much younger age, but it's still pretty. And we didn't use like only two strands. We used like all four or six strands of the embroider to give this effect. And then there was a piece of yarn that was stitched along to make the border to follow the border. But note the back. It's not as neat and pretty as my mother-in-law's stuff was. And even some of these strings didn't get cut right. But there's a lot of, see this drag? There shouldn't be these drags. She would never have those drags in there. But that's, this is what I wanted to show Pamela, that you can put a border on things. Like this was, this, I don't I I don't know if somebody put the border on this one. I think so because it's got the holes there. The holes are all there and then somebody did a little crochet. Probably my mother cuz I I could never crochet with the string. With the with the crochet string. It was too hard for me. 
I have tried and I still can't do it. And she used to do lots of doilies and lots of, they had chair covers, things that you put on the chairs for the arm and on the back where the headrest was. A lot of, a lot of the younger kids don't even know that that used to be used. And that was to protect the furniture from getting the grease and oils from, and from your scalp and from your hands. And it kept the furniture nice for a long time. Mr. Brown is sitting on his throne. He likes to sit on that. On, oh, there's some poop there. I see some poop on. The, see where he pooped on the on the washer? Got to clean that up. But anyways, Mr. Brown is sitting on his towel. I tuck it around so that he can't get the rest of them dirty, and he likes to sit there. And that's where he's been for quite a while now. Well. That is, I guess, the video for today. I don't know what I'll title this one. Maybe just crafting or show and tell something. I was showing and telling you stuff. Maybe that will work. I don't know. I'll find something that will work. So, but, what? You what? know how you said that uh, you'd be doing the redneck thing with your chicken in the rooster house? Yeah. It's actually a rooster trailer. <laughs> yeah, it is a trailer. Uh, well, you know, it looks like a peddler's trailer. So I'm peddling rooster. Rooster. <laughs> roosters. I don't know. It's like when the guy would come into the thing. Oh, I was going to end. <laughs> and the guy was coming into the, with the wagon and the horse, and he has his, opens it up, and he's going to sell you snake oil. Well, I'm going to sell you chicken, or rooster, rooster excitement. Rooster d dusting. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. I guess. I'm going to bottle it up and you'll be buying it, I'm sure. Alrighty. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.